All right, let's get the show on the road. Hello. Hello and welcome to Accidental Origin, your weekly writing web show. My name is Brendan, and of course, this is my show. Uh, what's been going on, guys? Gang? Peeps? People? All right, so um, so this week, what I've decided to do is work on a short film. If you've been around for the show uh, since its inception, or just in the last while, uh, you probably heard me talk about it, where, you know, my expertise is actually in screenwriting, that's what I studied in college, so that's what I actually know best. Uh, compared to pros and all that so hopefully this will go well and I won't come across as a complete scrub <laughs> um, yeah so yeah I wanted to work on a short film and yeah so there's a couple things I wanted to talk about before I got into the like writing itself uh, firstly I have not planned what I want to do yet, so bear with me for that. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to be making it up as we go. Do it live, as it were. We'll fix in post. Film jokes. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, two, writing a screenplay is very different from writing any other type of writing. It's extremely format heavy. It's designed specifically to do accomplish, the script is designed in the way the formatting is designed is to accomplish very specific goals. And we'll get more into that as I kind of go through the scripting process. But yeah, there's, there's a very strong format and breaking away from that format is considered bad form and really only like very, very well known like writer directors can really get away with it. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's part two. Uh, number three is, I had a third point, what was it? Oh, I remember now. Right, we're gonna get back to that. Uh, Cause it'll come up actually a little bit later when we start getting into the, the writing process. All right, everyone following me so far, any questions about screenwriting? Any questions about me or writing in general? Happy to answer, just let me know. All right. Give it a couple seconds for the leg, the delay to catch up. Cool, now we're good. So this software is called Trellby. It's a free uh, software that I like. Yeah, I don't have a command for that. It's a software that I like uh, for writing screenplays uh, because it's very basic. Uh, the main software that comes recommended in the industry is Final Draft. Final Draft is quite good. It's very expensive though. Um, 
like in the several hundred dollars US. It is an industry standard. So, yeah. Yeah, 250 US. It's pretty much what I thought. And it does some neat things, but is what it is. But I'm gonna use Strobe because I can't justify like paying for Final Draft when I'm not a professional screenwriter. Uh, though that could easily change. The nice thing about Strobe is it imports Final Draft scripts as well as exports them, so you can kind of like have it in the right formatting even when you're not doing that kind of thing. I suspect what I'm going to have to do is blow up this window. Because I don't think it's actually large enough to see. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be big enough. So like I said, free software, right? So it's not as, uh, it doesn't have quite as many options. messing around my settings here trying to see if I can get this to do what I want. Uh, it's not. I don't like the, the screenwriting features in the Scrivener, though. They're not as good.
can't just do the thing I want to do. Curses. just like zoom in but <laughs> no because then you got to see the whole camera set up and it doesn't work what I just need to do. I just need to do something like this. I can make it any better. Damn it. Well, that's my point, right? Because I just need to zoom in. I just want to zoom in on it, sort of thing. But I don't know how to zoom.
That works better. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Well, that's a conversation I did want to have because the idea behind screen, like the, the idea behind screenwriting is that there aren't, not every idea works, you know? Yeah, I have the right idea. I just need to delete that and then put that thing. Yeah. Okay, let's go with that. It'll work. <laughs> you did. You did give the same answer twice. Okay, so yeah. I think I got it. Screenwriting. So the idea behind screenwriting is that you're writing for a visual medium. So when I was talking about comics, you saw something similar where you're talking in visuals, right? You're trying to illustrate something that cannot just be told in words. Yeah, I got it. I blew it up. It's fine. Right. So that's totally a thing. That means, at least for me, that the story you're trying to tell in a short film or a screenplay, like a feature length or even a show, like a television show, though they're examples that get a little weird, is something that is really only described in motion. You want to show your audience, not tell your audience what's going on. Now, there's a couple of key distinctions I'm going to make here. One, your job as a screenwriter is not to give direction. You're not going to tell, you're not going to include a lot of shots in your script. That's for the director and the director of photography to decide. That's not for the screenwriter to decide. There are a couple of exceptions uh, specifically dealing with writing techniques or certain things. Uh, an example of that would be montages. Montages you can write into the script, no problem. Uh, things like uh, intercuts to focus on specific details if they're important to the story. 
those you can definitely do. But in general, you're shying away from camera shots. There are people who are much better at camera work than you who will decide those things and will figure out how to shoot your script. Uh, two, budget matters. And that sounds really weird, but the more realistic your film is in terms of budget, or the more realistic your script is in terms of the elements that it uses, such as special effects, um, special effects, or um, even like car chase scenes or explosions or, or stuff like that, the more likely it is to get produced. right so you got to keep in mind you know if you want that fifty thousand dollar exploding planet shot that that comes with a price attached and we're talking about me or i suspect unless i'm vastly mistaken the majority of you guys like you don't have a hollywood budget you can't afford shots like that and unless there's a very specific reason why that shot needs to be there, it's unlikely that it would get picked up. So that's just realism, you know? And that's not to say you can't write like a sci-fi epic or like something like that. I'm just saying that keep in mind that someone has to pay for the movie to be created and it's unlikely that it's you. <laughs> You know what I mean? And don't get me wrong, like indie, like short film creators and indie creators are very creative with what they do. They know how to do things for low budget. There's lots of really cool stuff that I've seen. Thanks, Rain. Have a good one, man. <laughs> Enjoy your homework. <laughs> oh, look at that cursor. Anyway. So, yeah. That is some basic elements of screenwriting. So, what do we want to write about? What would make a good short film? A good short film, like a good short story, is something that jumps you immediately into the action. Where it's a very self-contained element. Keeping in mind, a short film has no defined length. Uh, so we're talking anywhere from one minute to 25 minutes. Usually around the 20 to 25 minute mark, you're starting to get into a, uh, a short feature. Yeah, in medias res, like Sam said. Starting in the action. So yeah. Has anyone here seen a short film uh, other than me? Like, uh, a murder, sure. Socrates.
Yeah. There are, there are lots of videos on YouTube. There are also the majority of videos on YouTube I would not consider short films. But it depends. It depends what you're looking at. I, in a certain sense, I'm making a distinction between a comedy skit and a sh and like a narrative short film as being different things. Though I suppose you can make an argument that they wouldn't be. Which is fair enough. Yeah. And Disney and Pixar are great for stuff like that. Where they don't even use dialogue a lot of the times. Which is awesome. Create elitism. What can I say, Sam? I'm an artist. It is what it is. Can I type? That's weird. Cool. So do we want to do a murder? Let's do a murder. I'm cool with that. So, I haven't decided yet. Just saving right now. So couple things I wanted to mention while I was here. You'll see at the top right corner, that's what we call a transition. Like I said, you don't put a ton of transitions or shots in, though there are some that are relevant to how the story is told, such as jump cuts and a couple things. The only two that are always, or pretty much always in every script is fade in, and fade to black. Fade to black is basically the film script version of the end. Uh, so pretty much every script has that. Then you'll notice that when you go down to the next line here, it says interior house murder scene morning. What we're doing is this is what, or sorry, this is what we call a scene heading. Every scene has a scene heading. 
you write interior or exterior, location. I specified the location with a secondary sort of thing, murder scene. And then you give a time of day. The only exception being if a scene immediately follows another scene, you don't necessarily have to specify things like the time of day. But we'll get to that. Like I said, the format is like very, very specific. If you're looking, here we go. Let's go visit the bookshelf as per usual. So this is one of the textbooks from my screenwriting course. I think there's a newer version of this, uh, but this is like the book on screenwriting formatting. And uh, yeah, it has every weird exception example uh, that you could think of. If you can think of it, it's in here. Trust me, I've looked. <laughs> But now that I have this out, I actually am going to flip to, uh, where are you now? Uh, style guide. Okay. Oh, and for the record, screenwriting, um, screenplays are always, 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 and I will stress it again, always in Courier. That can be Courier New uh, or Courier Prime, but they're always in Courier. The reason for that is because there's a very well documented uh, screenplay formatting idea that a single page of text, no matter whether it's dialogue or action or whatever, is one minute of time in a film. So, if you mess around with any of the, the like strict formatting guidelines of a screenplay, you'll mess up that timing and producers don't like it because they like being able to say, well, this sequence will take this amount of time. I mean, it, it's not an exact science. It's not like every single page is exactly 60 seconds, but it's just one of the things where, you know, if you have a 90 page screenplay, it's pretty likely that the film is going to be about 90 minutes in total. <laughs> I like Courier. It took me a long time to get used to Courier, but once I did, it made so much sense. It's very easy to read. Uh, I prefer Courier Prime because it's easier to read. It's a, it's a better font that does all the things that Courier does. But yeah. So Master Scene Headings. Camera location, interior, exterior. Scene location. Time of day. Your three main things here. I don't know if you can see this. Camera location, scene location, time of day. Yeah, uh, a lot of readers, like, so the film industry is, is a little bit different than the prose industry 
in that the film industry is famous for employing readers, people who read a script before sending them to a producer. Like if you submit your script to a studio or to a production company, they'll have, they'll have someone hired who reads scripts and, and like pushes along the ones they think the producer will like or that they like or whatever. It depends on the situation or the person. Much more so than, like, editors who read uh, unsolicited manuscripts for, for no, like, for, for novel, like, publishing companies. It's a little bit different. Um, because a lot of readers, the amount of film scripts they get is crazy. It's much more so than unsolicited novels by far. Because it's a lot easier to write a film script in, in a certain way. Everyone has a film idea. Not everyone likes novels or writing prose. That's not to say there's not a ton of unsolicited novels, because there are, but it, there's a lot more screenplays, trust me, because every camera guy and whatever want, wants to write a screenplay. So, yeah. The employee readers. And readers will throw out scripts with bad formatting like immediately because they get so many that it's just not worth the time to even read past the first page uh you can't print it on it's got to be on white paper it's got to be single-sided it's got to be you know like there's a lot of things well the single-sided doesn't matter as much uh neither does the white paper because we've gone to a lot more of a digital system than a physical paper system like in the old days but still it's kind of like a resume. You don't put your resume on pink paper. It's going to get thrown out. Like, don't do it. You don't want to do it. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, I did this wrong. <laughs> well, I'm just saying that a lot of the stuff that's better. A lot of the stuff like comes from the, the old way we used to do it. I mean, Courier is the typewriter font, right? Like, there's stuff to be with that. Just thank God that there's... Uh... There we go. That's better. Thank God that uh, computers have simplified the process of screenwriting in so many ways. For example, if I was doing this on a typewriter, I would have to move the, the type head and the paper around to do all these weird formatting things, right? Like you'd have to go to the left margin to do the fade in, and then you'd have to go back to the right margin to do the slug, the scene header, and then you'd have to, like, it's, it would not be fun. Not be fun at all. So let's describe this scene. What's there? Oh, totally. Uh, I am thinking of like even further back though, right? Like in the fifties or the thirties when they didn't have electric typewriters and some of this stuff was starting to be introduced.
Yeah. Yeah, this way. I just need to look at the actual thing here. Okay. So, you'll see here that I've capitalized the word man. You should capitalize the first appearance of any character. <laughs> yeah, whiting out and having to type back over it, not fun. So that any... Um, Right. So I'll explain this a little bit. A, um, a lot of the weird formatting conventions are because so many different people read the script. And by so many different people, I mean when your movie goes from, from your hands and then goes through the reader and the producer reads it and he really likes it and he wants to produce it, so he contacts you, he gets the option, like he buys your script... All that stuff happens and then they get to the production stage well actually the pre-production stage but semantics so then he gives that script to a director and he gives that script to a costumer and he gives that script to camera a, a director of photography and all these different people live in this, or all these different people read the script and they have to pull different things out of it. So every time you throw a character in there, you're, you're, you're letting the casting agent know that there's a new character, that this is someone they need to, to, to hire. That's not necessarily true of every single uh, like spin-off character, but generally just important characters. So you wouldn't necessarily capitalize waiter, for example. But if the waiter is important to the story, you would. Like if he has dialogue or is important to an action or something like that. And so the casting director can go, oh, that's a character, that's a character, that's a character, and just highlight them through and be like, I need this many people to do this and this kind of, kind of thing. Uh, same with the costumer, same with all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of little weird things. Um, for example, you generally capitalize props like important props though that's more of a television thing but yeah so that you know your props department can can do stuff too
Well, welcome to the stream, man. Sure, why not? <laughs> I'm easy, it's it's fine. Wouldn't be the first time I've written a f short about myself. I was thinking a short film, actually. So the formatting would be the same as if a screenplay, a feature screenplay, but it wouldn't be as long. It should be a little different than a TV script. TV has kind of their own thing going on. Mostly because a lot of TV comes out actually, a lot of t TV is more influenced by stage than film is. <laughs> Which sounds weird to say, but if you think about it, in the old days it was a lot of uh, talking heads, right? Like you could, you wouldn't have to be watching a show, you could just listen to a show.
<laughs> I don't disagree, Sam. Though I would, I would say that TV, especially in the last four or five years, has been really changing that. They've been kind of bridging that gap between where they were and uh, the film industry. That being said, I do agree that that's not necessarily true of all network shows. But it is fairly true in general. So the important thing to note, um, and I'm going to take a break in a couple minutes. The important thing to note about writing a description is that you want to visual, you only want to use visual, visual descriptions. You don't want to use internal descriptions because you can't see internals. So you should only describe things you can see. You can give a certain descriptions that you can give certain descriptions of emotions when the audience is supposed to see something. For an example, if a character gets mad and you want them to sh to be angry on the screen, you can write that. You can write that like you can write that because it's a visual thing. You can't, however, write, he was angry on the inside, but his face didn't show it. 
it, it's not helpful. It's just wasted space. You can, however, write things like his face was impassive when we would expect him to be angry to give us that visual distinction of he's not reacting in a normal way. If that makes sense. I think that makes sense. Probably actually name him and not just call him man. Yeah, I need to name this character. Anyway, uh, I'm going to take a five minute break and then I will be back and we'll keep working on this. I think we have a solid intro, which is good. It's good. I mess with the position. Oh, that's the wrong thing. Center that a little bit more. That's better. Um, I don't disagree, but I actually have a very solid, I, I think, well, so the thing is, is you can just have him named in the script. You don't have to introduce him like you do in, in prose, right? You don't have to be like the man until someone says his name and then his name is used. You can just name him because he's a character, you know? <laughs> so yeah. And I think that's what I'm going to do because the thing I have planned next, like where I go from this scene is going to be a little weird. And I think I have to name him because it doesn't make sense. It's too hard to write what I, what I'm trying to do without naming him. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, it's about half a page. I 
<laughs> so yeah, bye, Bear Break. I'll be back. <laughs>